All right, so I love OER. Um, I just used it for a couple years now, but OER enables students to be able to access their materials quickly. They don't have to wait for any books to come in, and it's free for them. So, and this way they can uh, start from day one, free textbook, get to their materials. It's all online, easy to access, easy to use, and uh, it's it's got a lot of good stuff in it. So it's got all of the figures, all the pictures, all the stuff is really good, and. And I think the students really appreciate having that a uh, little bit uh, of a free option there. So love OER. Um, when I first came on back in 2020, uh, I was teaching multiple courses and the previous professor for one of the courses had adopted an OER textbook. What I found was for students, this was a, an incentive for them to come take this class uh, because it helped save them a little bit of money as far as textbook costs go. Uh, and then as I'm reading through the textbook, I noticed that OER just seems to be getting better and better with each new iteration and each new generation. Uh, and I wanted to become part of this process because I know what it's like to be a college student uh, that has limited funds and those funds are going to rent and food and tuition. And if we can reduce the burden on our students, even just by a little bit, by having OER textbooks and resources, I think that is hugely beneficial to the future of education. So uh, my first years in education, um, I was teaching high school before I started at the college, and we were part of a program called Beyond Textbooks that really encouraged teachers to just go find resources instead of being dependent on just following the curriculum and materials that you had. So I think I always kind of started out looking that way that I wasn't necessarily, I don't know, uh, tied down to whatever the set um, curriculum was. And so I was always of the mindset that I was always looking. And uh, as part of my college background, I got a little bit into publication. So kind of over time, it, I had started to think about, well, maybe I'll just kind of develop and maybe self-publish something. And so I, I've written a textbook in the past, I've kind of been through this process. So when I heard about the opportunity to create these OER texts, it just kind of made sense. It was a natural alignment for, you know, just my training and, and my, I don't know, my desire to create that I was like, well, of course I'm going to, I'm going to create some resources to help students. So, so far, um, I've been uh, working on two courses, an English 101 and an English 102 course. And uh, what I've done for these courses specifically is done a lot in video to make it uh, very visual for students. But I've also um, put a lot of uh, text on the screen so students can see it as well to make it a little more accessible and then build my assignments and, uh, and other content within campus kind of around that core of uh, the media driving the instruction. Or that was my initial step when moving into OER was to save my students on the cost of money. Uh, my second reason is to, I feel like it's more flexible. Um, flexible as in, you know, without having the book, if everything is just accessible, just right there, without having to go to two different, too many different things, they can just access it all right there. Um, and they're able to pull from it. And I like to be able to create the creativity about it. I'm not very good at it yet. Still working on that part, but, um, it's all about just trying to make it easier for my students to get through the class. I'm a chemistry teacher at Eastern Arizona College and I love open educational resources. A couple of reasons why. One, when we do labs here at EAC, uh, students have to print out material. Um, we've been doing this for quite a few years to help students save money from having to buy lab manuals or um, procedural manuals. OER provides me an opportunity to create this and share it with other people so that they can pick and choose which labs they want to use, do, or incorporate. My students love this because they come to class with this pre-printed and ready to use without a single cost. Then, as you see, they get to work doing science, all for much less cost than it would have if they had to buy a lab manual. So that's why I like OER. Okay, um, I really like using OER. Um, first of all, it's a cost. Um, it's, it's low cost or no cost to my students, and I remember what it was like to be a student. So I appreciate that aspect. 
but as an instructor, I really appreciate the fact that in the last couple of years, the instructor resources have just bloomed. They've gotten so much better. Um, they're, the support for instructor uh, using the uh, resources has just increased dramatically, and the content is has really increased um, as well. I mean, they're uh, just the the quality of the content has has increased greatly as well. I have no plans on changing my direction at all. As a matter of fact, I'm I keep going more and more into OER because I just find that there's a lot out there and that it's very useful. All right. So my my thoughts on on the benefits to students as far as OER is concerned is is chiefly the cost, but but additionally, along with that, is the professor who puts together an OER for his or her class is going to have a, a customized class materials. It's going to be it's going to be a set of resources for the student that is very specific to the teacher's teaching style, to the class itself but also for the the area a great example is these professors of my my college years they put together their own material that was quite specific to mining around here and what was really cool about that was as you as you completed these classes as you got done with them you were apprised you were you were instructed on the economy of the local area, but also trained in what jobs were available locally. There are so many different things that I love about open education resources. Probably the top three things for me are first, that it's very, very available for students. Uh, I love that on the very first day of class, everybody has access. There's no wait time. There's no, uh, who's ordered their book, okay. Well, here's some copies and you know i i like that it's just ready to go as soon as the class starts i love also and so maybe the number two for me is uh, that it's customizable i love that the content experts the faculty who have been vetted and hired because of their expertise can deliver the content that they're so passionate and knowledgeable about in the way that they think is the best and then uh, number three although maybe uh, maybe this is in ascending order. I love that it's low or no cost for students. I, I really like the idea that we're doing everything we can to make sure that our students have equal access, uh, equitable access to everything, and that we can keep a little money in their pocket in an already stressful time in their lives. It has made this class extremely affordable as opposed to some other classes where I have to pay like hundreds for textbooks. It has made me be able to stay within my budget as a college student that's having to, you know, only work part time. It's, it's made things really accessible. So OpenStax has been absolutely great because, you know, it's a free program and it also makes it really easy in order to highlight stuff and also search for keywords. So instead of having to like skim through a textbook, going to the back, looking through the index or anything like that to find a specific word, you can just press control F and find exactly what you're looking for. So it makes studying a lot easier and finding what you need way faster. The benefit of having uh, free textbooks is endless. Being a college student, it's really hard um, to be able to afford anything in this economy. So having these textbooks that are free to use is amazing, if, especially when you live off campus and can't really afford a lot of things. Being able to not spend that 300 plus dollars on the textbooks that we need is very beneficial. I am grateful that I don't have to pay for textbooks because they're expensive. I'm grateful that I don't have to pay for the textbooks because it gives me more it gives me more space to spend money on things that I need, like food. What do you think about having free textbooks? To streamline the process and make it a little more efficient, I 
guess it's been uh, last summer. I knew I was going to go into this, so I was going to rebuild um, these courses. I've been teaching them for over a decade, but I knew I was going to rebuild them to, to make it uh, so that it could work as an OER. So last summer, I had kind of planned out you know, the version of the course I wanted to move it towards. We we're starting to incorporate some elements about AI and some other things into my, my 101 and 102 courses. And so I had it all plotted out. I knew what I wanted to do. And then I simply just knew how many videos I needed to create for each unit of my course. And so I broke it down that way. I figured out kind of a rhythm. And, uh, and then during my summer, I would come in, record some videos, edit them together, put it into the course so that my students could use them. But I also was forward thinking knowing that I wanted this to be available as an OER um, resource and I wanted this available for my face-to-face -face students in the future. So by taking the time to do this, I was, I, was, uh, I was thinking forward to the OER text, but I was also thinking about something I could use in my classroom as well. Um, and so I, I just plotted it out and I, I scheduled that around my summer. All right, if I were to give advice to somebody starting an OER uh, right now, I would encourage them to budget enough time for it. It's not a quick thing. It's not, it's not a, you know, crank it out and have it done. It, it's going to take time. It's going to take some, some effort in polishing it and making sure that it's doing what you need it to do stuff and making sure that that stuff is customized to your situation and your needs. And it takes time. It takes a lot of time. The three things that I think are most useful um, in helping you prepare and to carry out the development of an open educational resources, first starting with a very good and well thought out course design. Um, having that done in advance just makes things so much easier. Um, and then number two, um, working with your librarian to find resources and uh, help you find resources that have been vetted and are uh, have the right copyrights, uh, Creative Commons copyrights. And then number three, the probably the most uh, amazing and beneficial part of of developing an OER if you you've got is the support system around you. So that librarian I've mentioned. Um, and would be a great instructional designer here at EAC. We've been blessed with the opportunity to work with an instructional designer. And it has been a huge, huge, huge blessing. I keep thinking, what did we ever do <laughs> without an instructional designer? They are absolutely amazing. Um, and um, so I would highly encourage you to, to work with one as you develop your open educational resource system. Um, the only other things that I would also uh, say that has helped us um, has been having an instruct um, a, a professor as a lead uh, at your institution, I think has also been uh, a, a blessing for us um, because uh, an instructor knows or a professor knows what the challenges are uh, the barriers when developing an OER. And so working with someone who's, who's created an OER uh, in some way is also uh, helpful. If you can collaborate, here's a little extra icing on the cake. If you can collaborate with other institutions in developing your open educational resource, then that's even better um, because then you can spread out, spread the work out a little bit and also you've got different uh you know people to run ideas by and and so it, it's really beneficial if you can do that as well i've been really happy to hear that our our community college here at eastern arizona has been um very supportive of promoting oer and and i think it's only going to build from this point on out that there's, there's, from the top down, our, um, our vice president is, is very interested in, in being able to promote OER texts. We have a good lead on site. 
and we have more and more professors who are getting really interested in it. Yeah, so that's kind of what I see as the future for our institution. I, as of this semester, I'm 100% OER um, as an English professor. I think I will have more professors join that in the future. We have lots of departments on campus that are really interested, but I do think that number is going to grow and it could become a very significant number in the next five, ten years as teachers see the value of, of how much freedom they have with the resources that they use and students enroll in courses and it increases enrollment in courses as they see how it can help save them money. Over time we'll also see the longitudinal data for how students um, perform and and courses that are using OER materials and I and I think that the data will support that it's going to help them. Uh, students are going to feel engaged, they're going to be able to access uh, the resources and it's, it's going to bring that stress level down and just kind of help overall. When I think of the future of um, OER at Eastern Arizona College, um, I think of being able to help the faculty help the students make their content more accessible to the student uh, with them. It will, great, it, it will be great to be able to give them just as good and sometimes even better content um, without asking the students to pay so much money. Um, I see a terrific opportunity for faculty uh, in each department to be able to collaborate with, with other faculty in other departments um, to discuss how they're using OER uh, which is, you know, it's great to have that communication among faculty in the institution. And finally, it's awesome, it's going to be an awesome opportunity to have each institution, have Eastern Arizona College collaborate with other institutions, um, which when, when that happens, um, that building that uh, environment of collaboration, uh, among institutions, it's it's going to be a better um, experience for students as they. I'm very optimistic about the future of OER here at Eastern Arizona College. I think that faculty are increasingly aware of the benefits to both themselves and to their students of using open education resources. And because it really is the best thing for students, the lowest cost and the most flexible option for instructors, I expect that it'll continue to grow.